This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Yes, yes, the recommendations are flowing through me. Oh, hey, what's up? Oh, nothing. I'm just producing more content for my website, Arlo Recommends, which is way easy because I didn't have to worry about building the site. I don't have to worry about keeping it working or any of that. Squarespace makes everything so simple. I just write the content, plug everything in, and I'm good to go. I can schedule posts ahead of time. I can have them pushed to my Twitter automatically. I can embed tweets and videos. And no matter what, everything just kind of looks great. You can make just about any kind of website, and there are tons of templates templates to start with, so there's never any fumbling or guesswork. And when you want to dig deeper, there are more features to play with, powerful extensions to explore, and even analytics to help you understand your content's reach. If you want to get in on this, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. Then when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash Arlo to save 10% off your first website or domain. More recommendations! More, more! Cloudy with a chance of meatballs. Silk pillowcases. This low carb recipe for a spaghetti squash pizza casserole. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Ha, Pokemon Legends Arceus is nearly upon us now. Oh, 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 uh, uh, but if you're watching this after the game is already out, uh, the video is still relevant, so please don't go, please don't go. Oh, please, I need that sweet engagement. And with Pokemon Legends Arceus come the first major changes to Pokemon's combat system since the earliest games in the series. This is one reason I'm quite excited for the game. Ever since I played Sword and Shield and realized that next to nothing had changed in all the years since I'd played a new Pokemon game, I've been complaining quite loudly about how the series could be so much more. Other turn-based RPGs have proven that the genre can offer a whole lot. Bring on them changes! Even beyond that, though, the reveal of Legends Arceus breathed new life into an old debate. Early on, no one was completely sure if the game would actually feature turn-based battles. One rumor in particular claimed that the series was changing to real-time combat. That didn't end up being strictly true, as we now know that Legends Arceus does indeed feature turn-based combat, in addition to action sequences where the player must try to catch a Pokémon while avoiding its attacks. But it was still a very interesting idea. And ever since that initial reveal, I've spent a lot of time wondering what a Pokémon game without turn-based combat might look like. I have to wonder if that's even an idea worth exploring for the series. Should Pokémon stick with turn-based combat and just allow it to evolve and become more strategic? Or should it one day cast off the inherent limitations of turns and go full-on real-time action? Well, I've pondered on this to myself for long enough, and now the time has come for me to ponder on it out loud. Before we get started, though, keep in mind that even though this video poses a question, it does not necessarily answer that question. Because obviously, it's impossible to definitively answer that question. Every series and gameplay style is different, and every person's tastes are different, so there's no single best way to go about designing a game. I can't really tell you whether or not Pokémon should be turn-based forever. This is a topic that's still absolutely worth discussing, though. So please, join me as I ponder this question out loud into my microphone and camera. When you're dealing with a game or series with a well-established style of gameplay, the very idea of change is a very tricky thing. This is a concept I've spoken about quite a lot and that I don't feel Nintendo gets right in every case. Video games, naturally, should change to at least some degree between titles. That's simply what it means to create a sequel. You can't sell the literal exact same game again and again. Insert joke making fun of series of your choice here. You've got to add something to the experience to make it feel new and keep the audience engaged. And in many cases, adding is the primary way of making a good sequel. Taking the formula that people already liked and adding more stuff to it. Creating new weapons and mechanics, giving players new things to do, etc. But it's not always practical or even feasible to only add, especially when it comes to very old series. In many cases, there comes a time when you need to do more than just add. You don't want your series to become a massive, bloated, confused mess. That's why you've also got to consider change, making some aspect or aspects of a game or series different from how they were before. Sometimes even replacing ideas 
ideas entirely. But then we come to the classic conundrum that I'm always talking about. How do you know what kind of change will be successful? How much can you change before the experience is too different? When is a developer refreshing a formula and giving it new life? And when are they leaving something good behind? And not to mention a lot of fans in the process. One of Nintendo's biggest strengths and weaknesses is their obsession with the concept of newness. Even now, with the Switch largely deviating from their Blue Ocean philosophy to deliver a more straightforward mainstream gaming experience, they still can't let go of that word, new. Where most other companies just want to make something good that people enjoy, Nintendo executives are always going on and on about how they want to make something new. This is, of course, a double-edged sword that probably ends up cutting them just as often as it aids them. Sometimes we get a spunky little system that sells a trillion units. Sometimes we get a fresh new take on an old series that completely reinvigorates interest in it. And other times we get gimmicks that increase prices and drive developers away. Or we get games that create nothing but anger and frustration among fans who feel they're being betrayed. Even after all these years and so many controversies, Nintendo still haven't quite learned their lesson that new isn't always good. This might sound pretty tangential so far, but stay with me. And yes, it was perhaps inevitable that I would bring up Paper Mario in this discussion of changing a series combat style. The Paper Mario series had two games that used a similar style, and since then it's been struggling to figure out its own identity. What is Paper Mario? Are these RPGs? Are they platformers? Are they puzzle games? Is having flat characters the only thing that makes a Paper Mario game a Paper Mario game? Nintendo doesn't seem to know, and despite plenty of people being fine with the direction the series has gone, it's still a very big source of frustration for many, many people. It's a series that just can't stop changing drastically between every title. In these cases, there are those who will always accuse serial complainers, such as myself, of simply not liking something for being new or different. This is, of course, absurd because it's very much possible for a new idea to simply be a bad one. And it's also very disappointing when something new feels like it's completely replacing something that was much better. In the case of Paper Mario especially, adding something new that a lot of people don't like, and also just straight up taking away 10 other old things they used to enjoy is not a recipe for success. I promise this is related. I promise we're wrapping back around here. I'm sorry. Point is, Paper Mario is an extreme case of change that's much easier for me to take a firm side on. But with many other series, this whole subject is much trickier. Deciding exactly how much new to introduce, how much old to keep, and how much old to change comes down to the individual developer, sometimes even the individual producer or director. And there is no single blanket answer to any of these conundrums. Every series is different. Every individual element with the potential to be changed is different. And of course, every fan base is different. Breath of the Wild is a great game to look at here. It represents a very big shakeup in the Zelda formula. The tightly designed overworld has been replaced by a wide open sandbox. The item-based progression has been replaced by an entirely non-linear structure. The standard dungeons the series usually features have been largely replaced by lots of mini dungeons, which themselves have replaced standard puzzles with physics-based challenges. Breath of the Wild is a very, very different game from its predecessors. For people like me, it was a breath of fresh air, just the shakeup the series needed, a bold new frontier for Zelda. But there are plenty of people who just felt that it was too different. The game removed too much of what these people liked about the series and replaced it with concepts they just didn't like as much. To them, that core Zelda identity has been altered too much. It's not even Zelda anymore. Trust me, I sympathize with these people. I would never in a million years accuse them of just not liking the game for being different. That idea is absurd. Because again, how much can you change an experience before it's just too different from the experience it's supposed to be building upon? 
How do you refresh a formula in a way that pleases people without leaving half of them behind? Where do you find the balance between old and new? Does that balance even exist? If the majority of fans dislike certain changes, does that make those changes objectively bad ones? Or am I wrong for thinking Paper Mario changed too much, but Breath of the Wild's changes were justified? Or was that okay because of the sales numbers? Is it more about the overall number of satisfied people rather than the ratio of satisfied people to unsatisfied people? It's a mess. <laughs> it's just too much to consider. To bring things back to Pokemon though, this is the conundrum the series is now facing. Well, in my eyes at least, it's very much possible that the people making Pokemon have absolutely positively no intention of ever deviating completely from turn-based combat. For the sake of discussion though, to me, the series is kind of at a crossroads. Should it simply continue to develop the turn-based formula with new ideas? Or could there be a future where Pokemon is no longer turn-based at all? Would changing the combat just be too much change and leave too many people behind? Or would it make the series better than ever? The way I see it, there's merit to both sides of the debate. And in fact, I myself am not firmly in one camp or the other. Real-time combat does indeed feel like a direction I could see a series like this going. On the one hand, failing to change for 25 whole years might suggest that they have no intention of ever changing that much. On the other, going so long without changing makes me feel like, in theory, by now it might be easier for us to accept something new. You ask me, Pokemon combat feels exceptionally stale. So I'm very much open to the idea of just shelving it. If they had spent all this time regularly developing their turn-based gameplay formula and adding strategic new elements to it, then I might say, all right, fine, that's just what Pokemon is. You can't throw all that away in favor of an entirely new combat system, but the universe we live in where pre-Arceus Pokemon is the way pre-Arceus Pokemon has been for 25 years i pick an attack out of four and that's it it's your turn to pick an attack out of four i don't personally think i would be sad to see such a system go there are so many turn-based rpgs out there that make pokemon look absolutely infantile what would we really be losing Though, to turn it back around again, do those other RPGs prove that Pokemon is lacking as an RPG? Or do they prove that Pokemon has a ton of potential as an RPG, and that it would be silly to squander that potential simply because it's gone a long time without being realized? I actually really like turn-based combat when it's done well and offers a lot of strategic options. Should I wish for Pokemon to just throw out the whole idea and focus on action? Or should I simply wish for a better version of what we've had all this time? This is what I'm talking about. It's complicated. Turn-based combat itself is kind of a weird thing because in my eyes, it feels like it was initially created so that people can enjoy combat in games even when playing on very underpowered systems with simpler software. There was a time when people made turn-based RPGs simply because that was all they could manage while still offering the level of role-playing depth they wanted. They couldn't make big, complicated action games, so they represented actions with text and gave multiple options to select in any given scenario. There's no doubt that this was why Pokemon started as a turn-based RPG there wasn't really another way to do it on the Game Boy. In that sense, someone might describe turn-based combat as something antiquated, something that's just not necessary anymore now that hardware is stronger and action games are easier to make. If you had asked me my stance on this debate when I was a kid, in my prime Pokemon playing years, there's no question which side I would be on. I thought the gameplay was plenty fun, but to me, the main fun of Pokemon was the Pokemon themselves. It was the immersion, the variety, the sense of choice, the idea of choosing all my favorite monsters and raising them myself, building up a mighty team of awesome fighters who were also my friends and helped me take down the mob and ate pizza with me and and let me pet them in my imagination. The gameplay was secondary, a means to an end in a sense. 
If you had asked me what a Pokemon game 25 years in the future might look like, I'm sure I would have imagined these big exciting fights where Pokemon were attacking each other in real time. Without the limitations of the Game Boy hardware, nothing could stop Pokemon from being as big and exciting as it was in my dreams. There are probably a lot of people who feel or would have felt the same way, especially when looking at the young and casual audiences. Pokemon as a concept is just cool. You could probably change the gameplay entirely and still get a tremendous number of those people to show up. Because that's just Pokemon. <gasps> Pokemon? Is that the one with the Pikachu? Oh, my friends are playing it. I want to play it. I don't care what it's like. Today, my desires aren't quite so simple, and I'm at least slightly more tuned in to the concept of game design. But while I no longer necessarily see real-time mainline Pokemon as an inevitability born of modern hardware, I still spend quite a lot of time trying to imagine it. The idea fascinates me. Selecting attacks in real time, having to pay attention to the actual speed and maneuverability of your Pokemon, battles would look more like they do in the anime, and that's a very exciting idea. When basically anyone imagines two Pokemon fighting, that's how they're imagining it, like the anime. They don't imagine the games because that's not how creatures actually fight. Animals don't just stand completely still and shoot bites at each other. So to see what two Pokemon fighting would really look like, having battles that look like they do in the anime but are completely controlled by you, it's a very exciting idea. I'm also fascinated by the idea of actually controlling a trainer on the battlefield while giving commands. There are plenty of more action-oriented Pokemon games, but they always have you playing as the Pokemon themselves. Sure, maybe in Smash you can see the trainer in the background, but you're still manually operating the Pokemon. So imagine if you were running around in the same way you do in Legends Arceus, but you were also shouting out moves and watching them play out, and maybe even telling your Pokemon how to maneuver so they can better dodge attacks. There are many ways you could go about it. The potential there really gets me dreaming. That, to me, would be the perfect modern Pokemon experience. Back to the other side of the debate though, even if that would be incredibly cool and do a much better job of emulating the exciting feel of the Pokemon anime, well, now you're talking about a very different game here. I mean, sure, you could still have XP and levels and evolution and all that stat stuff going on behind the scenes. You could even keep the four move system. Maybe everything apart from combat could be entirely identical to the way it's always been. But that new gameplay is very, very different. It's more about quick thinking and good reflexes. If you're controlling your trainer, you've now got the environment to worry about. Giving directional commands to your Pokemon beyond just what moves to use? That's a whole new thing. No doubt, if Pokemon were to move in that direction, you would have a whole lot of people feeling left behind. Those people have collectively put quintillions of hours into a very specific style of turn-based gameplay, and suddenly that gameplay is just gone? Pokemon, that series that's been around for decades now, is suddenly super different. Even if I loved the new style, I would hate the idea of so many people being so disappointed by it. Then you've also got to consider accessibility. Legends Arceus, with its whole dodging thing, is the first time the mainline series, or anything close to the mainline series, has ever demanded that the player react to something in real time. At least when it comes to the core gameplay. Even if I sometimes find myself bored by the classic style, there's no doubt that it makes these games a lot more accessible. Right now, almost anyone can play Pokemon, and at their own pace. A kid who doesn't really like action? Someone who finds it difficult or even impossible to input commands quickly enough to keep up with a demanding encounter? Someone who's just not very familiar or practiced with playing games? They can all play Pokemon, very easily. You've got four attacks to select and your items. You've got an easygoing overworld to explore. Nothing ever puts pressure on you to hurry beyond maybe some mini games here and there. An entire Pokemon game could technically be played with one D-pad and one button. And considering Pokemon's already very large audience, maybe it shouldn't come as any surprise that it's taken so long for the series to change. Maybe they haven't wanted to compromise that simplicity because it's been working so well for them and the players. Maybe it's not because of laziness or cheapness, but out of a simple desire to keep the series as accessible as possible to as many people as possible. 
When you think of it that way, it's almost surprising that we're getting this new style of gameplay in Legends Arceus. And maybe that is my clue that this really is a spin-off and does not represent the future of mainline Pokémon. Between the accessibility and the ease of development, I can definitely see why the Pokémon Company might elect to never even come close to the kind of action-based combat I've always dreamed of. Maybe tweaks to the turn-based combat, like the ones introduced in Legends Arceus, are the best anyone can hope for, and even those require a whole lot of waiting. At the end of the day, when it comes to that question, should Pokémon be turn-based forever, there's only one thing that I know for sure, beyond a shadow of a doubt. I don't know. I just don't know. Would it be fair for one gameplay style to replace another? Or would that be Paper Marioing the series? Do I really want real-time combat to be the new norm? Or would I end up missing the classic battles after a while? And even if I didn't, would it all be worth disappointing so many fans of the old style? One could easily argue that if both gameplay styles have merit and appeal to different people, then maybe they should just make games in both styles. And I would say, yeah. You're probably right. One, thank you for your input. I probably agree. I mean, that's one thing I haven't seen a lot of people considering. What if Legends Arceus isn't supposed to represent an evolution of mainline Pokemon or act as a simple spin-off? What if this turns into a new series with real-time combat that runs alongside the more traditional turn-based titles? Or if that's not necessarily what this game is, nothing stopping them from creating something of a separate concurrent series. In that scenario, we could all have our cake and eat it too! If that's not going to happen though, I suppose this thought experiment shall continue. I shall keep dreaming of what a real-time Pokémon game might be like, and also wrestling with the question of whether such a thing should even exist. This is a big one, folks. This is a conversation starter if ever there was one, and I would love to see your arguments down in the comments. Oh, uh, but, 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 I mean like, like, like arguments for or against such and such, not, not, not like, um, like, like, arguments. <laughs> You know. Well, thank you for stopping by, my friends. And if you're watching this in a future where all Pokemon combat is real time and the games look and feel like games that were actually made in the 2020s, then send us a postcard from the 2040s. Hey-o!